You've probably been in a similar situation where issues like this cause problems in your Golang application. Definitely Let's Encrypt and Google had issues with this weird loop bug before Golang 1.22. That's why in this video we are going to examine the actual issue and how Go 1.22 actually fixes this issue. Oh and by the way, if you're new here, my name is Flo, I'm a professional software engineer and on this channel we do everything related to the software engineering world. And without further talking, let's quickly jump into the weird behavior of this loop issue in Go. Now, this code here is not the original code that Let's Encrypt dealt with, but it's a really similar issue. And if we look at this code snippet, everything looks fine, right? Now, let's quickly go through this code. First, we are going to declare an array which contains the elements A, B, and C. After that, we are going to declare a non fixed size slice and then we have the simple for loop now in this for loop we iterate over the values which are a b c and the underscore here basically means that we do ignore the index for this loop and we only want to have the value which in this case per iteration is a b or c in this case now go assigns these variables in a per loop scope that really means that the value, so v in this case, is updated at each iteration. But here it is really important to know that v is not redeclared. So we are reusing v over and over again. And this is basically this suspicious behavior and the issue that actually causes the wrong output for this functionality. Now what we are going to do in this loop is pretty much we are appending a new function, a new anonymous function to our print slice. Now these functions pretty much just print the value that is in the current iteration. Now this is the error prune behavior and we are going to discuss this in a minute here. Now the rest of the code is pretty self-explanatory so I'm not going to go into full def here but all we do is just call the functions that were declared and initialized in our print slice. So let's quickly test our application here. Now I've created two simple scripts that just run this specific Golang application in Go 1.21 and 1.22. Now these scripts make use of Docker and basically the scripts look really simple. Now a quick explanation here, Docker run just runs the container. Dash dash rm basically removes this container whenever the Docker stops running. So it's kind of clearing up the environment here. Now the dash v just mounts the current working directory to our slash app working directory. Now this basically allows the container to just access the files we have here in our Go application. The pwd basically just stands for print working directory and this returns the current working directory of our system where we currently are. And afterwards, the w flag basically sets the working directory to be slash app. And then we pretty much define the image, which is in this case Golang 1.21. And in the other script, it is Golang 1.22. And then we just execute the command go run main.go to run our Go application. Now let's quickly run this program here with go 1.21 and we can actually see the issue. So it always prints three times CCC. And this is pretty weird, right? But the actual reason for that is the per loop scope. So let's quickly get into dev here, what it is actually. Now, generally it is important to understand the behavior of closures and the capture of variables in a loop. Now a closure, a quick explanation here, is just a special type of anonymous function that kind of references variables from outside of its body. That really means that closures allow you to create functions that remember their environment and can be used to create more complex behaviors or more complex programming patterns. Now these closures are pretty useful and they are used for creating private state and encapsulating functionality, for instance. Now, when the anonymous functions in this code here are created inside the first loop, they kind of capture the value of the loop variable v. But all three functions capture the same variable v, which will be always a reference to the last value in the value slice. 
And I'll talk before about this per loop scope, which means that the loop variable has a scope that spans the entire loop, right? And not just the individual iteration. Now this basically means that each iteration of the loop uses the same V variable and the last value assigned to this value, to this V variable, is what gets captured by the closures. And this is a really weird behavior, right? And the kind of same behavior was also with the let's encrypt issue where a pointer to a value always changed and in the end the pointer was always the last entry in a map. And this was kind of the same issue here. Now there is a solution in Golang 1.21, which basically is that we kind of copy this V value here in our iteration or per iteration. So we can say for instance, underscore V and assign the value V here. And then we can use underscore V. Now this would basically solve the issue and it looks kind of ugly and it is not really beautiful, right? Now quick explanation here. What this basically means is that the closure now has its own kind of variable per iteration. So basically we do declare a new variable at each iteration and assign the current value of v. And this basically happens at each iteration. So at each iteration we declare a new variable. Instead of like in the previous example where we just used v, that v always gets updated at each iteration of the loop. Now if we run this example here, things basically work, right? Like I've said before. But since Golang version 1.22, you do not need to explicitly define this underscore V anymore. And by default, these Golang loops do now have a per iteration scope. Now this basically means that our V here that is in the loop that contains the value A, B or C basically has now its kind of own scope and V gets always redeclared at each iteration of this for loop. Now let's quickly test this behavior here in Golang 1.22. And if we run this, things just work, right? Which is really beautiful. So Golang fixed this particular issue and obviously also fixed this issue with the let's encrypt uh, code issue here. Now generally Go 1.22 makes things a lot better, right? When it comes to this particular Golang loop weird behavior. And if you want a brief crash course on Golang, I highly recommend watching this video here. So it provides an overview of everything you have to know in Golang. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day and bye bye.